What's up? Now, this video is a special video that I wanted to create because I needed help. In the YouTubes of all places, because YouTube's a great search engine, I was searching for 8K raw light. I have a problem. Anyone editing an 8K raw light from the R5 on Adobe Premiere? Now that's pretty specific, but if you're here, you are probably looking for the same thing or you're just here to watch one of my videos, but that's what I'm here to talk about. Editing 8K raw light on Adobe Premiere Pro CC, which is what I'm trying to do and what I've actually done a couple of times while testing it out. At first, the files were not working at all, but thankfully Adobe's updated and I downloaded this uh, Avid RAW thing from Canon's website. Hopefully I'll put the screenshot up here so you can see what I'm talking about because I don't remember what it was called in particular, but I did all of that so I can get the RAW light files from the Canon R5 to actually work on Adobe Premiere. So when it actually put it in there and it did work, it actually read the files, I was so excited because that meant I could record a lot more 8K RAW footage onto my CF Express card, one terabyte I've got. So it's like an hour and 34 minutes I get of raw recording in 8K. So this is super, super useful when I need it. Yes, there's overheating, but when you're working on a project that can actually give you some break time and you've got the shots planned correctly, such as this one right here, the overheating is not a problem at all. I would not use this for longer shoots where I'm shooting like presentations or different like events where it's just gonna be on all day. That doesn't make much sense at all. R5 is still my go-to camera, but I'll choose something else like recording 4K and then of course using C-Log3, which will work just fine. And then grading from there, which I get 10-bit 422 color images with no overheating problems whatsoever. So that is particularly great. But right now we're talking about the 8K raw light. What is 8K raw light on the R5? Now, if you don't know, the R5 is a camera that's capable of 8K raw recording. And those 8K raw files are pretty fat. But what does that file type let you do? Well, it lets you adjust white balance and exposure settings in post and gives you, I believe 12 bit color information, which gives you a lot more detail in post. Now that's exciting, but the files are so big, they're like 2.6 gigabytes a second, if I'm not mistaken, which is huge. Though they're so big that you actually need a CF Express card type B to be able to record that, and you only get like 52 minutes worth of footage on a card that's one terabyte. Imagine all the hard drive space you'd need to be able to work with those type of files. Well, it turns out that recently Canon released a lighter version of that in their latest firmware update called Raw Cinema Lite. Now this is kind of different from like the C200's Raw Cinema Lite, but it's still Raw Cinema Lite on the R5, which is great. However, when using Raw Cinema Lite, at first it didn't work at all in Adobe Premiere Pro. But when it did, I ran into this unusual problem. Now I'm going to switch my colors back to basically what the file comes out looking like. What you're seeing right now is the graded footage. When I snap my fingers, this is what it looks like on Adobe Premiere Pro. Everything is like magenta to the max. Ugh. Let me switch it back. And that's my problem. Now I created a preset in Adobe Premiere Pro specifically to address that issue so I could just get the magenta way down and I could just work with a, a better, easier starting point and then edit from there and get the colors the way I want it and get everything really detailed the way I want it, skin tones where I think that they should be. But unfortunately, it is a problem that still exists that I can't find a solution for. Now, my workaround, of course, is setting that preset, and I'll show you right here what I did. What I did was I basically went into this preset right here, and I adjusted the tint down a little bit, as much as I could, and then played with the curves slightly, just to be able to get a workable file that will let me use the raw footage and feel comfortable with the way it looks. However, the magenta levels, even when turned all the way down in Adobe Premiere Pro, are still pretty strong. Now, not, they're not uncomfortably strong, but they're stronger than I think they need to be to look actually natural. However, 
I could get it back to looking fine the way I need it to look. And when it comes to the R5, as a backup, I'll actually record the 4K proxy in case the footage is just destroyed and I can't work with it. I know I'm working with a 4K proxy file that I can actually recover because the proxy file itself doesn't have that huge magenta cast. So I don't know how to fix it besides that preset or of course working with DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve, I'm having some unique issues that I wasn't having before. And those unique issues are that DaVinci Resolve, as I'm loading this Cinema Raw light, it just crashes immediately. And I've got the latest build, but it's a problem that I'm having. So hopefully this video at least has a temporary patch that if any of you guys have faced this problem, you can see this temporary solution that gets the colors looking from this to this really quickly and just know that your footage even if you don't have a fix right now you at least have a patch that'll work to get you into a look that is at least doable and presentable to a client if so necessary or to youtube if that's what you're putting out there however if any of you guys know a permanent solution that actually gets cinema raw light from the canon r5 looking good right from the start just like the regular raw please let me know and, and I'll be hugely grateful and I'll mention you in the next video because that to me is important because saving space is totally cool and totally something that I wanna do. And it's a shame that I haven't found anyone on YouTube talking about it. It almost makes me feel like I'm the only one with this issue. And if I am, help me out guys. But thank you, as soon as I hear more news on different cameras and, and different gear related to video work, I'll let you guys know on the latest and greatest, and of course tips with the R5 and any of the cameras that I have. And I've got another video in mind as to why the R5 has completely replaced my NX1 as my kind of reliable camera for long events. But we'll talk about that later. Thanks, and check out these videos here as well if you want to learn more about this camera stuff and this camera world. But as always, make my day. If you subscribe today, this is Magnus, and I'm out. And hit that like button too, and all that stuff. <laughs> See you later.